Welcome everyone. This is Michael from the Marx Group Live. Happy to be working with you on reporting within Zoho projects today. After this video is over, please feel free to email us at support at marxgrouplive.com for questions on this topic or on anything else Zoho. Also, be sure to rate this class as well, helping out your fellow Zoho users and helping us to improve our video library. In this class, we're going to look at how to get reports happening within Zoho projects. Like any project management information system, Zoho makes it possible to view your project from a variety of perspectives, giving the project manager the information you need to get your projects on track and keep them there. I've used a handful of project management information systems over the years, including Microsoft Project, AEC FastTrack, Gantt Project, and OmniGroup's OmniPlan. They all have strengths and weaknesses, and I might not have explored all of their features to the fullest potential, but for any given feature, I'd say about Zoho, <laughs> yeah, it'll probably do that. The amount of reporting available in Zoho projects is vast, so we're not going to get into a whole lot of detail on this class. We're going to get started with talking about the types of reporting that are available in Zoho projects. Those are basic pro reports, premium capabilities, enterprise capabilities, and advanced reports and dashboards. We're going to look at how to find reports in Zoho projects. We're going to look at and do have an overview of the six different types of reports, including a quick tour and of, uh, of all, oh, that should be actually six groups, sorry. And we're going to look at some common report options. Now, before we get into our Zoho screens, one word of advice. If your screen doesn't look exactly like mine, don't panic. Your version of Zoho may be slightly different from mine, and there may be a few differences across some of the screens. Depending on which uh, paid version you're on, you may have more or fewer options than what I have. If you try to replicate what I'm doing and you get stuck or you run into a roadblock, drop us an email at support at Mark's Group Live, and we'll see what we can do to help you out. Let's get started with types of reporting in Zoho projects. I have to admit that Zoho does not make this entirely plain or intuitive. There are great options at a variety of price points, but it can be a bit of a chore trying to figure out what kinds of packages you have to buy in order to access any particular feature. To help you out, I've broken it down here. We start with Zoho projects itself, which offers five different price points. There's the free, standard, Express, Premium, and Enterprise. All have slightly different reporting options as you pay more. All users get basic task and issue reports. While only paying users get the advanced task and issue reports, we will take a look at both of those today. When you reach the premium level, you get to see project resource utilization chart, and you get to the ability to edit project Gantt charts directly. And at the enterprise level, you get the global resource utilization chart and global editable, editable Gantt charts. But wait, as they say, there is more. If you subscribe to the Zoho Analytics service, you get all of the built-in reports that I just talked about, all the way up to ultimate level, and you get the ability to slice and dice project data. That's Zoho's phrasing, not mine and you get dozens of additional reports. We will not be looking at the Zoho Analytics reports in the context of today's class. If you're interested in finding out more, let us know and we'll, again, see what we can do to help you out. So let's take a look at where to find those reports in Zoho. Fortunately, it's pretty easy. If you happen to be um, in the, at the Zoho home screen, you'll see global reports under the home menu. And if you happen to be in a project, such as the Create V2 project, you'll see reports usually by default down either at the very bottom of that list of tabs off on the left side of your window, or you might even have to go into the ellipsis to see them there. If reporting is something that is critical to the work that you do or to getting paid by the people who manage you, um, then you might actually want to move the reports tab up to the top uh, or up closer to where it's more easy to see and easier to get at. Um, of course, you can rearrange tabs to suit your liking. 
check out our class on oh sorry that's where we often find the reports check out our class on organizing tabs um, you should find that in the courses section of this uh, website okay so let's take a, let's move on to looking over some of those report types let's go there all right now in this class I'm only going to cover actually let me go back to home all right <clears throat> Uh, in this class, I'm only going to cover the reports that are built into Zoho projects. I will not cover the ones that come with Zoho Analytics. So here I am. I'm in the ultimate um, Zoho environment. And here are the types of reports that I can access. Let me just skip on ahead. There we go. So on the global level, that is, running across multiple simultaneous projects, I have the task Gantt chart that covers all projects, all tasks. I have resource utilization charts that cross, again, project boundaries. I have planned versus actual charts, and I have the project timeline Gantt that shows me all of the uh, projects, sort of um, with each project rolled up into a single Gantt chart uh, or into a single line of the Gantt chart. Then for individual projects, I have six different possible charts. I have, again, the task Gantt chart that is based on each particular project. I have resource utilization charts. I have planned versus actual charts or reports. I have task reports, issue reports, and timesheet reports. Now again, those lower six <coughs> report types are based on each specific project, whereas the one four up at the top uh, cross project boundaries. So you can be running multiple projects within one Zoho, uh, Zoho projects instance. So at this point, we're going to delve into Zoho projects and take a very, very quick look at these reports. Before we engage though, I have three quick caveats. Let me scroll to here. First, I am, as I mentioned, in the ultimate version, so you might not have all the same reports available. If you have Zoho Analytics, you'll have more. If you'd have something below the, uh, or more economical than the ultimate version, you may have fewer reports. Second, the uh, projects that we have in Zoho projects in our uh, teaching environment right now do not have complete data in them. So uh, our reports are going to look a bit threadbare. Yours will have far more colorful bits in them. And third, I'm showing you the reports that are available, um, <laughs> but I'm not actually discussing uh, how each project relates or how each report relates to formal project management methodology. That would be, as project managers would like to say, out of scope. So now that we have the caveats out of the way, let's start with the tour. To begin with the global reports, as I said, we'll find them under the Home tab at the top of the screen. Let's go there. At the top, we have the Gantt chart. We also have the resource utilization chart, project versus planned versus actual, and the project timeline Gantt chart. Now here within the Gantt chart, we have either a chronology Gantt or a milestone Gantt. These are subtly different ways to look at your project progress. Um, we have this vertical bar that lets me focus on either the colorful bits or the data that goes on to make up the colorful bits. I have the fit versus the maximum uh, sizing there. This simply allows me to select my chart scale so I see everything or uh, I see a larger amount of detail, which would, of course, require more scrolling. Of course, our scroll bars are down here. When I hover, I usually get information. This is brilliant. I love being able to do this. I love having this information. Um, as I hover over any particular task, I can create a new task 
I can jump to that ta particular taskbar on the left right axis. Left to right. I don't know why that's not jumping for me. There it is. And there's my task. And I can move it. I can reorder tasks. I can set successors and predecessors. Um, again, I am. Um, we will deal with Gantt charts in greater detail in another lesson. Uh, I can here add either a task or a task list right from here, even though I'm looking at all of my projects. Um, I, this is a very quick way to add information. I'm going to skip over the funnel for the time being. I'll go straight to the ellipsis where we have options for printing our Gantt chart and other options for viewing the Gantt chart. Again, we will cover details of uh, Pro Zoho Project's Gantt charts in another class. Um, let's see, down below that, I can jump to unscheduled tasks. And now I'm going to return to the funnel. Now you see over here, task owner and task status. These are actually part of the funnel. So on this funnel, uh, with this fault funnel, I can actually filter what I'm looking at. I can choose what I'm going to look at. I can actually remove both of those selectors. Oh, sorry, I need at least one filter criterion. I'll say, uh, show me all open tasks. There. This is an amazingly powerful tool for the project manager who needs to be able to see the big picture and then drill down into specifics. If I have more than one filter set up, uh, let's do that and that. If I have more than one filter that's set up, I can simply click on the X beside it to remove that filter. Let's move on. The resource, the global resource utilization chart. Actually, let me do this. Let's see, we've looked at the global Gantt charts. The global resource and utilization chart is up next. This shows you each project team member and how much of that team member's time is being utilized. I can set the work time unit. So I can set that to be work in hours. I can set the task status to show me open, uh, all open activities or closed activities. Uh, I can filter my results to see a specific view, again, using that great funnel that's over there. And um, I can convert to a PDF right here. I can convert this to a PDF for viewing in another application. For insight into how this chart actually works, actually, let me just show you this in a moment. When I return to the screen, look at that first column right there. Let me just go to Gantt chart and return to the resource utilization. This is, each one of these is a fulcrum. And in order to understand how the fulcrum works, what I see is all of my things are way off to the right, which means I have no tasks assigned for those users. But here we have under the question mark on the right hand side, I have that question mark and I've got help that's built in. And it gives me an idea of how to use this resource utilization graph or report. So it tells me these particular features what it, look, what it means when uh, a, uh, what the colors mean, what the numbers would mean in there, what the icons stand for. And there's even a video that I can pop out and view in full screen mode. Let's see. Oh, to move uh, backward and forward in time, I use these chevrons down here. That will take me forward and backward by one week. Let's see. When I um, 
I, when I ask Zoho to uh, create a PDF of the file, it asks me if I'd like to um, if I'd like to uh, encrypt the file. This is usually a good idea. This is usually a good idea, just in terms of uh, protecting the privacy of the my team members. So I'm going to put that away for the time being. Let's look at the next chart: the planned versus actual. And remember. Uh, all the graph charts, all the reports that we're looking at at this point are still global. So that's across all projects, unless we uh, configure the funnel or the selector, the filter, to indicate otherwise. In the planned versus actual, let's get rid of that. Um, let's see. Planned versus actual, and what I will say is... Let's go for the month for all users. There we go. In planned versus actual, I can see the difference between how much work was planned within a given time period. And we, again, we have the chevrons to go left and right, means being backwards and forwards in time. Um, the difference between uh, what, how much work was planned and how much work was actually logged. And really, realistically, what this means is you have to be on top of your project team members to report their work accurately, or else this chart becomes meaningless. Um, once again, I have selectors here under the funnel or the filter, <coughs> and I can export this data to an Excel spreadsheet. Let me cancel my selectors there. I can choose to export this view to an Excel spreadsheet or an XLS format. Um, Again, Zoho gives me the option to encrypt the data before it's sent, and that's usually a good idea. And finally, in the global uh, reports, I've got the Project Timeline Gantt, which is another Gantt uh, chart, but it shows me the status of all of my projects. Once again, I can select the horizontal scale here with the Fit button, and I can filter my results using the funnel or the filter. As with other reports, I can print this directly from uh, the application or I can convert, uh, convert it to a PDF. Once again, I have this vertical divider here that I can choose to move left or right. I can scroll each side left and right independently. Um, although having, even though it's possible to scroll, I have to point out that um, scrolling is not terribly intuitive. It forces you to memorize information or to keep in mind information rather than being able to see it and process it. Uh, and that means that this gives you a really good reason to tell your boss that you need at least six monitors on your desk with a really impressive computer that can drive them all and tell them that I said so. All right, so let's see. We've just taken a look at the Global Project Timeline Gantt. And what this one does is this one simply shows you uh, the progress of all of your projects in very much a helicopter view. As with other many other graphs here, I can click on almost anything, or I can hover over almost anything, and go there. So when I click on something, that usually takes me to it usually takes me to where I am or where I where I can get more details. Let's move on to the project level reports and charts. First up, once again, we have the project chart. Now this version, sorry, this, um, this set of reports, you'll find when we're in a project, sorry, there, now I'm in a project and here's my reports. I'm gonna start with a Gantt chart. There we go. As with the global Gantt charts, we can either view the milestone chart or the chronology chart. And at this point, there are no tasks available. Um, uh, other features, let's see, let's go back to the milestone chart. Other features of Gantt charts are just like the global ones, including the ability to move your lines left and right. 
Um, we can add tasks. We can add task lists. I have options here for funneling or filtering the information. Uh, and further options here, just as there were with the, um, with the global Gantt charts. Of note, however, there's a scrolling to unscheduled tasks, but here we have two other buttons. Uh, the project level Gantt chart allows you to view either the critical path or the baseline. Now you can see that I haven't set the baseline yet because when I click on that, it says, whoops, haven't set it yet. Now again, we should have a class. If we don't already have it, uh, please let us know. We should have a class specifically on Gantt chart control in Zoho projects. Um, it's going to be a very specific, very advanced class uh, for people who are project managers. Um, if you're not familiar with project management methodology, um, it's probably just as well to leave that chart exactly under the critical path and not to worry about the baseline. Um, so that's the Gantt chart. Let's go to the resource utilization chart, which again, is just like the um, global global resource utilization chart. I have basically the same options. Here I have my filter or my funnel options. I can convert this to a PDF. I have again the uh, help that shows me how to interpret these uh, icons or these uh, oh, they're almost spark lines. Uh, that's the resource utilization graph. The again, the difference is that this report uh, works on a per project basis as opposed to working across all projects. Planned versus actual. Once again, this acts just like its big brother. However, it limits the scope to the current project. Now, something that's pretty cool is that I can click on a project team member, let's say TMG Live Admin, when I click on that project team member, I get to see the tasks that went into uh, producing this report. And then I can drill down even farther. I can click on that. And now I get a uh, task report. Or I get the actual planned uh, versus, I get the planned versus actual task information here in the task descriptor. From my own work in project management, I cannot overstress how great it is to be able to switch almost instantly from a macro view to a micro view of what's happening within a project. Let's put that away and we'll find ourselves back here. Now, actually, let's do this. Oh, let's stay in, let's stay in uh, the B2 project. Now we get into task reports. Here we can see the difference between the basic reports that are available and the advanced reports that are available. The basic ones are in all versions of Zoho. Even the free version gives you this information. And then these four reports, uh, these four task reports, are accessible only to people on a paid version of Zoho projects. So for basic reports, we've got the status, the milestone, priority levels, the owners, the task count based on owners, and the completion percentage. Off to the right, I can filter my view again. I can choose what information I see here. Now, unlike other, uh, unlike other graph uh, reports, here I can choose the chart type. So I've got four different chart types. I've got the horizontal, uh, bar chart. I've got the vertical bar chart. I have the pie chart and I have the donut chart, which is a really interesting chart, but not very good if you're hungry. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we can often click on data, even hovering over the data right now. When I hover over this, I see details about the information. Let's go to the pie chart. There we go. Completion percentage zero, count is three. Completion percentage there is one. 
I can click on that and I'm not sure that's going to work for me right now. No, so for the completion percentage, it's not letting me click. This might work though, yep. So for different types of graphs, uh, clicking on the data will often take you to, see, let me go back to my reports. There's my report. Clicking on the, the um, graphic, the visual representation, hovering gives you some information, clicking gives you more information in many cases. There are my filters. Again, I have the left and right chevrons that allow me to show more or less of the data that I can use to filter my view. And I have the ability to export to PDF, uh, or I can, well, export history. Uh, export history doesn't actually export the history. It's in, instead, it's the history of my exporting activities. So if I've already exported this the graph, it would show me that I have exported the graph on a certain date. Let's see, what's that one? That was the task report. Issue reports. Now, issue reports aren't always enabled, so certain projects may not have them. In this project, we've enabled issue reports. Once again, I have basic reports and advanced reports. So my basic reports uh, I can report by the status of the issue, this, who, to whom it was assigned, who reported the issue, and so on. This is classic uh, project management stuff. This is classic issue tracking information. So if you've implemented issue tracking in your project, which I think is probably a good idea in a lot of cases, um, this lets you keep track of who submitted the, the issue, how many issues you've got, um, and gives you some sense of how you're working on burning down those issues. Um, here are some of the advanced reports. Issue status by owner, by escalation. You can even create a custom issue report based on any two criteria. This is a really neat feature. So if there's a, if there's a report that Zoho doesn't already have that's related to issues, you can roll your own right here. And then created versus closed issues. All right, uh, and finally, let's see. Finally, we have the timesheet report. I'm gonna go back to the Create B2 project and let's go for a timesheet report. For this project, it's pretty simple. We have one person. And once again, I can hover over that information to see, oh, well, you have 1.09 hours of billable time. And when I click on that, it gives me the details of the timesheet. All right, that was, oh, this is really cool. In the uh, timesheet, now this is actually part of the, uh, this is actually part of the timesheet functioning, but I can um, add log time. And once again, I have my funnel that lets me select data and I have my export options right there. All right. Let's go back to global reports. Let's go back to there. All right, let's recap what we've done in this class. Today, we looked at the fact that Zoho, uh, Zoho projects gives you different types of reports, not only the two, two global types or global versus project types of reporting, but also different sets of reports based upon the particular version that, you, that you've purchased or haven't purchased or what other services you may be using by Zoho. We looked at how to find reports in Zoho projects. You'll either find them under the Home tab up at the top of the screen for global reports, or you'll find them off on the left, uh, on the left side of your screen for project level reports. We took a look at the six different report types. I should have modified that slide, I'm sorry. So it's five groups plus one um, types of reports. And we looked at some common reporting options. We took a really, really fast view through all the different types of reports, and we looked at what sorts of features we might have. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video. Check out our library for other training classes uh, like this one. If you have any suggestions for other uh, videos or suggest questions that you may have about Zoho, please do email us at support at marksgrouplive.com. And thanks very much for watching.